Uh, we have this tweet from The Recount. A moment ago, I was talking about how Tucker Carlson <clears throat> suggested we may be under attack. We've got unidentified flying objects being shot down. Maybe that's a distraction. We've got infrastructure being attacked. We've got train derailments. We've got uh, chickens being culled, egg shortages or avian flu or whatever. Seems like our infrastructure is being hit pretty hard, especially with a Chinese spy balloon flying over. I mean, the first thing China would do is subversive tactics to weaken our economy and throw us off balance before making a militaristic move, which would require a military response on our end. We got this tweet. Lock your doors tonight. Listen to this. This has been going on for a long, long, long time. Um, at, at, at least 2017. And last week we were told 2019. Um, that's what I took away from it today. Thanks, Thanks so, guys. Thanks. Appreciate it. Lock your doors tonight. Thank you. Okay. He was being asked about UFOs being shot down. And he says, we're finding out it's been going on for, for a lot longer than we realize. Lock your doors tonight. Now, of course, the way we, f we can frame this is when asked about UFOs, the senator said, lock your doors tonight, as if to imply what? What's he implying with this? That, it, that it, he's <laughs> implying that you should protect yourself from being probed. Maybe. But like, let's think about this realistically. He's not literally saying aliens or anything like that. We're talking about unidentified flying objects and Chinese spy balloons. He says, lock your doors. That sounds like there's some kind of sabotage going on. I don't know. I mean, he's the he's a a shit poster. Kennedy pardon my French. is he, so funny. He's I'm pretty just hilarious. He had the uh, when the commercial where he was like, next time, telling like defund the police out kids. Uh, next time you get in trouble, call a crackhead. Yeah, <laughs> like he is pretty severe. But with this, I mean, he's somber in in the in the moment. I I wonder. Oh, he's if got it's, a smirk on after he walks away. I wonder if it's uh, that. He thinks the general chaos of balloons, like it's not necessarily that aliens are going to touch down or whatever, but that general instability is coming. And it could so be the culmination of all the chaos that's been happening, especially between if balloons you're from and Louisiana. explosions and you know disasters. Lock your doors because you know they're they're common. Yeah. Do you have a plan for your constituents as to what to do when the aliens invade your district? I feel like that's some high level stuff. I feel like most of, most of my preparation was around how are we going to fix the roads, not how are we going to stop alien invasions. Yeah, uh, I don't I'll, think I'll try. Is. I will do my best for the people of, of Mon County, but I can't make any promises regarding extraterrestrial the, invasion. The, the the sad thing is that part of me wants it to be aliens because it's just bad. It sounds bad that I was thinking that too. It and does maybe sound that's but, the but then like the aliens would just wipe option. us out and take over. We or saw something, Independence but, Day. You know, yeah, there, no. there was there were some losses. I'm not so. <laughs> So I blew up the White House. <laughs> there are some losses. I'm not so. I'm not so like hoping that it's aliens, but I. There is part of me that's like, man, I hope it's something interesting. Yeah, you know, it's gonna turn out to be just like the Chinese military. We're gonna go. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> that's yeah. what we thought it was. Well, this sucks. <laughs> and then what? I mean, I, I suppose the sad thing is, it's gonna turn out to be something mundane, like. Uh, Some Estonian preempt, pre teenager just no, launching no. things? No, no. Chinese military engaging in preemptive surveillance as they prepare a military action on Taiwan. Mm -hmm. And then we're going to be like, well, that's boring. You know, like, it's, it's funny. Do you think that's what they want? For you to be like, oh, just not that big a deal, even though that is kind of a huge deal? I mean, it'll mean war. It's just that that's what we expect. And that's boring. You yeah. know, going like, oh, everybody expects there's going to be a war with China. It's the city trap. They want Taiwan. We don't want them to take Taiwan. A spy balloon flies over. Weird things are flying over the country. You got to lock your doors at night. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We get it. It's Russia or China. World War Three is going to start. Have we become that cynical where we could actually yes. get to yes. the point where yes. World War Three is sure. is yep. start has actually started and people are just start. like, Bleh. Dude, people are just wanting to start for the memes. Think yeah. about the content. That's <laughs> the only. That's, that's what they. These people cannot wait for war to break right. out just so they can get some likes. Right. I mean, there's maybe like, the, maybe there's something to that. Maybe maybe the the nihilism that is, and this might lead into. I don't know when you want to talk about that other story about the uh, the depression and stuff, but this might lead might lead into or be from the the nihilism that seems to be taking hold with with young people. Like, mm -hmm. like well, I think you know, it's a symptom of the twenty four hour news cycle, right? You've got to report on something. So we've been reporting on potential dangers in Taiwan, potential aggression for a long, long time. It doesn't seem as dramatic as all of a sudden there was a bomb dropped, right? And Fair enough. For but there, other generations that didn't have the exposure to constant news through social right. media. Fair enough. But right. we, we are we are actively arming Ukraine and they're in a 
hot war with mm-hmm. a nuclear armed but it's easy nuclear to start, peer. It's easy to start tuning it out when you hear about it nonstop. I mean, yeah, exactly. how many outlets out there are constantly updating you about how what's going on in Ukraine? It's not that it's not serious, but you become sort of numb to it. I don't think it's nihilism so much as just overexposure. Maybe. Yeah. You're like dopamine drained and you're mm-hmm. also your adrenals are just like shot. Like, it all starts do? to sound the same, right? right you know yeah. something bad is going on. You know this but nothing is so severe that it it means there's an official war, it means whatever. That's that's reality. Mm-hmm. You know how long the American Revolution took? Twenty years you were talking about? Twenty so. years. Mm-hmm. The revolutionary period they called it. Yeah. I suppose you can argue that the official war wasn't until, you know, a declaration or something like that. But you you had conflict. For years. I mean, the separation of the Boston Massacre and the Boston Tea Party was years. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, think about it. It's been three years since it's it's 2023. Imagine tw- three years ago was the beginning of the pandemic. Mm-hmm. It seems like a really long time to us. Yeah. Now, think about Donald Trump getting elected. That's seven years. Oh wow. Well, not seven, wow. but six, just a little bit over six years. Trump getting getting elected for his first term. It feels like forever ago, sort of, but it also kind of feels like the blink of an eye. But when they write about this, I, I often talk about this, when, in the future, when they write about this period, World War III, Second Civil War, pandemic, whatever you want to call it, whatever it may be, because we can't see the future, there's going to be a huge chunk of time. And for all we know, they say it all started on August 17th, 2011, when activists came to New York City to begin, to begin preparations for Occupy Wall Street. They may say that was the moment it began. But even that moment had a precursor. You had the WTO protests in, in Seattle, the battle in Seattle in 99. But that was a bit far away. I mean, that's we're talking 12 years. Maybe that preliminary meeting for Occupy Wall Street is what kicked off the culture wars, which leads to internal conflict and in all of this. And it's all part of one big conflict period, fourth turning or whatever you want to call it. I find myself picturing the... Uh history textbook I used in sixth grade where certain terms were bolded and you were supposed to learn them and they were these key moments because you have to be able to boil down history you know into small enough portions where you can start remembering it before you can add in all of the details Mm -hmm. and at one point like I I find myself checking the news and being like oh so is this the bolded term that a different generation will get they'll have to remember this date in particular it's it's impossible to tell from where we stand right now we we were pretty sure they'll remember uh, when Russia invaded Ukraine this time around but I don't know that anyone could tell you when Russia went into Crimea the last time. I mean, they might write that World War Three started in 2014. Yeah, with the uh, invasion uh, of Crimea, the Euro Biden protests. Oh, right. Beginning of right. well, arguably end of 2013 with the Euro Biden protests, yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. and which which uh, carried on to 2014. Or right, the invasion of Crimea, the annexation of Crimea. Mm-hmm. But then you have to wonder what precipitated Ukraine. It may say the Syrian civil war. Mm-hmm. It may be the Good Arab point. Spring. Yeah. The Arab Spring period of, insta- uh, of, of uh, instability, destabilization of these countries, mm-hmm. created openings for terror organizations and conflict, which started to spread. Then you get the conflict in Syria. Then the U.S. moves in, et cetera, et cetera. And this, this oh, whole yes, thing breaks yeah. out. Yeah. But I mean, if you think about it, nobody talks about World War I in the sense of, well, it didn't really start with the assassination of Archduke Franz Ferdinand. It's actually the reason he was assassinated was because, no, everybody says that started it. It was the yeah. assassination. But clearly there was a reason Duke got assassinated. There's a ton of buildup ton of buildup yeah i think the thing is yo we're in the forest mm-hmm. right we yeah. can't see it mm-hmm. you leave the forest and you can be like wow that's a huge forest now nah, we're right in the middle of it totally. that's one thing when i like i keep talking about like a cultural revolution in the u.s and i think that's where the reason why people don't realize that it's going on is because it's actively happening and and if they could take a step back you they would see the similarities between like you know the blm protests and the red guard in in the in China yeah. in, the, in the 60s. It's like watching a time lapse. When you actually watch the time lapse of the flower growing yeah. and like the guy pushes the seed. So they'll, they'll put like a, a little piece of glass and the dirt up against it in the pot. You see the finger push the seed in and pour water and then it time lapses the whole thing growing. If you did that yourself, you would not see the growth ever. Yeah. You'd walk up one day and it would look a little bit bigger, but you wouldn't really think twice. The next day you'd be like, oh, look, there's a little bit more. The next day it's, it's blossoming. You're like, oh, wow. But you don't see it all happen at once, so it's not a shocking moment to you. Yeah. So then how far removed, how far out of the forest do we have to be before we can watch the entire time lapse and say, oh, you know what, this starts to make sense. I could see where I could see how it started. So basically you're saying once the war is over, we will look back and be like, Oh yeah, yeah, the war's over. I mean, well, unless of, it goes to like a real significant hot war where like mm-hmm. you know, it's act where it's undeniably right. a hot war, but that's otherwise, yeah. I think we're gonna see in modern warfare it is not going to be 
U-boats landing on shores or whatever, or, or missiles flying through the air. No way. It's going to be like chemical trains exploding and spewing toxic chemicals over a 200-mile radius. It's going to be people shooting up power substations. It's going to be millions of chickens all of a sudden getting sick. You know why? Someone super chatted this us yet to, to us yesterday, that the reason buffalo nearly went extinct is because the pioneers were killing them intentionally to destroy the Native Americans' food supply mm -hmm. so they could win the war, yeah. the wars against them. Mm -hmm. So if our food is being corrupted, disrupted, or destroyed, our livestock, for instance, that could be warfare. Yeah. And we may just be too stupid and like, oh, oh look at that, our chickens die. That's so strange. When well, in reality, they, 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 there's war, as we know, is going to take place on multiple fronts. I've always seen the, the comparisons of Chinese TikTok versus our TikTok, where yeah. our TikTok puts the dumbest things imaginable on the front and kids get addicted to it because that's what kids do. But Chinese TikTok, it's all engineering, academic innovation, these kids doing crazy, crazy things that they can aspire to. Mm -hmm. And there's this massive destabilization effort of our culture, of, the, of young people, which is, you know, that's the stock of tomorrow. Yep. So yeah. it's it's going to take place. So if you com, com, uh, combine that with attacks on the food, attacks on the power grid, attacks on the water, it's really we'll we'll destroy ourselves. Thanks for watching this clip from the Timcast IRL podcast. Hang out with us live Monday through Friday at 8 p.m. and become a member over at Timcast.com for uncensored members only shows exclusive. Thanks for hanging out and we'll see you all next time.